<laughs> you tell them, Morty. Jeez, you guys don't have to be dicks about it, all right? Yeah, neither did the guys before us, but you know what? They were. Merry Christmas, you yeah, shit Yeah, ghost bags. of Christmas future, bitches. You f***ing idiots. So mean. You guys are mean. Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. This is going to be my Rick and Morty Season 4, Episode 5 video, the mid-season finale. I know you'll have a lot of questions about what's going on with the rest of the episodes for Season 4, so I'll address that at the end of the video, too. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get everything. I will be doing bonus videos during the break, too. There is a new round of that merch giveaway. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and leave your favorite time travel Rick and Morty moment from the episode. That's right, everybody reach for your box of time travel stuff on the garage shelf because they finally did a big time travel story, the thing that they said they were never going to do. So careful for spoilers, if you haven't seen the episode yet, we'll do top 10 WTF and Easter eggs as we go along. There were a lot of callbacks to earlier episodes. They've got to that point where there's enough Rick and Morty episodes in the past couple of years that they can start referencing all the stuff that they did in previous episodes without it feeling too recent. So starting with number 10, the title of the episode, Rattlestar Rick Lactica, a reference to Battlestar Galactica, we learn during the cold open scene that Rick has a bunch of different methods for avoiding having to stop to go to the bathroom every couple of hours. He's got a pee jug, he's also got a centipede you can swallow that will take care of it, which we later learn that he's actually using during the course of this episode. And there's another promo where they reference Summer having to go to the bathroom and Rick going to find her one and Morty revealing that Rick put a catheter in him at some point. Technically, I don't think that that's canon because this version of Morty clearly doesn't have a catheter put in him. But message received, Rick really hates stopping to go to the bathroom while on adventures. Number 9, Jerry's storyline. He's incompetent through most of the episode, which is pretty standard Jerry, but his whole mission is to put up Christmas lights. They kind of gave this episode a Christmas theme. It's Christmas in real life when they're releasing the episode. They obviously planned it this way. There's also a Christmas card at the end of the episode with a bunch of snake hisses on it. This is one of the many episodes when Rick refers to himself as a god. He says he earned his status as a god rather than being born into it. Remember, Christmas theme talking about Jesus Christ, the Christian god. He claims his idea for fixing Jerry's situation is way more complex than just walking on water. You notice, though, that despite the help, despite all the trouble that Rick went through and all the trouble that Jerry went through to put the Christmas lights up, he still does a really crappy job of it. Like, he winds it around this satellite dish. Like, this just feels like a disaster waiting to happen, even after he completes the task. Number eight, Morty versus the Space Snake. So they get a flat tire, and this is obviously just a big joke about anything being able to happen in space. The writer said literally they just wanted to have some fun with the idea that anything could happen in space. We find out about more secret functions that Rick's ship has. Oh, I have a simulation device that simulates flat tire experiences on Earth. He also has the Christopher Walken message. They say, oh, no, that's just terrible. But we later learn that Christopher Walken also gave him a special device for pausing people, which seemed like a reference to that Adam Sandler movie Click, where he gets the remote control that can affect the flow of time. But Rick makes a whole bunch of pop culture movie references when he goes to fix the flat tire. The bit about the guy spinning away when two of them leave the ship is basically every space-based movie and TV show. There's always some point in a space-based TV show where one dude goes flying off because of some accident. We learn he's got some space suits that work a lot like Iron Man's nanobot armor from Avengers Infinity War and Avengers Endgame that just form around him when he needs them. They start the running gag about Morty not staying inside the ship when Rick tells him, like he yells at him, stay inside the ship. I believe he tells him two more times, which feels kind of like a callback to the joke from season three, episode one, where Rick says comedy comes in threes. In this episode, he tells Morty to stay inside the ship three times. The third time is when he gets ready to punch him in that Christmas card scene at the end of the episode. He also makes a big joke about Saturday Night Live. It's so utterly specific in their takedown that I'm assuming Dan Harmon wrote this bit and he just doesn't like Saturday Night Live that much because it sucks all the air out of you, making you float around it like a flash mummified corpse, which is also what space wants. Rick's joke about everything being in space is also very true because even though we, for example, are standing on planet Earth, Earth is a planet in space, meaning that we are technically in space. Number seven, WTF, they go to the snake planet. So obviously this is kind of a silly idea. The whole joke about the snake planet, there's 19 billion snakes made up of 10,000 different countries all on the brink of global war because of racism. It's just a darkest timeline parody of Earth right now taken to the extreme. Some of the background details of their snake culture are hilarious, the way they committed to this bit. Like you have snake nuclear warheads, but the missiles are all curvy snake bodies. 
They make a joke about Buzz Aldrin when Morty says, what's his name, Buzz Aspirin? And Rick also gets it wrong, correcting him to Buzz Advil. Both types of pain medication. It seems like snake jazz is now the new human music of Rick and Morty. When Rick mentions Jeff Foxworthy talking about the snake culture, it's him referencing Jeff Foxworthy's You Might Be a Redneck joke format that he's so famous for. Over in Jerryland, while he's busy getting himself into trouble, he makes a white men can't jump reference. That's an actual movie with Woody Harrelson and Wesley Snipes. This is also one of their first celebrity cameos. This guy is voiced by Phil Lamar. He does a whole bunch of different animated series. They also make another Nazi fascist joke during this storyline, but there's a couple other during the episode. So many fascist references this season on Rick and Morty between this and season four, episode one. Number six, Morty gets his replacement snake. You notice when they actually land in the garage and Rick's like, peace, I'm out of here. They linger on the box of time travel stuff in the background. Remember how they said early on, I think it was back during season one when they were promoting the show, they said that that was there because they never ever wanted to use time travel in an episode. Rick and Morty was all about different realities, not about time travel. But here's a drinking game for you. Take a drink every time Morty gets bitten by a snake in this episode. But number five, the interdimensional cable Easter egg. When he sneaks past Rick to steal a spaceship, you hear that Rick is actually watching or fell asleep watching the same Plumbus ad from interdimensional cable two, which I think is another clue that they are planning on doing interdimensional cable three later this season. But number four, welcome to the planet of the snakes. They do a bit of a planet of the apes parody where the snakes have evolved to human culture. They're all wearing clothes like humans, which seems kind of weird. You see snake ships with little fangs built onto the front of them. Like, are the ships going to bite people? What's going on here? I loved how much they committed to this bit. You either love this or you hated it, but I thought that it actually worked really well. This is one of my favorite episodes of the season. One of the things that also made it work so well is that there were no subtitles during the snake hissing scenes when they were talking to each other. Like you just see snakes hissing gibberish at each other also made the joke just a little bit funnier. Snakes flying jets, reporter snakes, snakes wearing lipstick, snakes with newspapers and a complex written snake language. But the whole reason for the Terminator snakes during the episode is because they translate this earth snake's language and the snake tells them about how all the snakes are kept in captivity, humans are monsters, they treat us like animals. During this part of the episode, they also imply that Rick trapped Jerry in a painting at one point. That's a reference to an episode of Are You Afraid of the Dark, where there's a witch that traps people inside paintings. But number three, Terminator snakes. So the Terminator plot starts with them doing a parody of each different Terminator movie. I think they really mostly focused on Terminator 1 and Terminator 2. But when the first Terminator snake comes and interrupts Morty while he's busy jacking it to his phone, that's them doing the first Terminator movie because you see this version of Kyle Reese snake wearing the same outfit as he did during the first Terminator movie. Morty becomes their version of John Connor. You see them do the Terminator 2 intro scene. It's literally the scene from the beginning of Terminator 2. When the human looking Terminator snake hybrid tries to save them in the garage, that's also them doing Terminator 2 with the Schwarzenegger good Terminator coming back in time. They named their version of Skynet Serpicor, and then when you get that female snake voiceover, that's just the Sarah Connor voiceover from the beginning of Terminator 2. When Rick and Morty travel to the snake planet, they do a Robocop parody. This is meant to be their Ed 209 from that first Robocop movie. Things really start to go out of control with the Terminator competing timelines, and they have their Sarah Connor moment where the snake says, this does not make sense. Number two WTF, Rick gives the snakes time travel. So again, just another thing that Rick and Morty said it was never going to do, hammering home the time travel plot. Rick complains about having to learn snake math. A lot of these bits here, they then pay off at the end of the episode because then the future versions of Rick and Morty come back to help them by giving them the snake costume so they can go back to the 80s. Morty says he wonders how he got a black eye. They answer that in the post credit scene with this version of Rick punching him in the face saying, stay in the ship. When they go back to 1985, Snake MIT, you see a Snake Back to the Future poster in the background. Rick breaks the fourth wall when he says we're removing ourselves from this sloppy story. That's the writers calling out the inherent flaws in all time travel movies and TV shows. Just the fact that none of the plots ever make sense. When the snakes get time travel early, they start messing around by saving Snake Abraham Lincoln from being assassinated. But the twist is they then bring it back around to another fascist Nazi joke. In present day, everybody is a Nazi now. There's a statue of Abraham Lincoln as a fascist, which I feel like is a callback to Aberdolf Linkler, so pour one out for him. Technically, I think he's still alive, though. The chainsaw gun seems like one of the animators doing a Gears of War reference that they then later bring back when they go back to kill Snake Hitler. 
things go completely off the rails, but it's all part of Rick's plan to make them go stupid way faster so that they get on the radar of the testicle fourth dimensional aliens and they come to fix things. Summer also reminds us about how freaky and DTF she is revealing she's into choking, no choking without my consent. They bring back the fourth dimensional beings from Rickle and Time played by Key and Peel, but it's only Key this time and the other one is played by Eddie Pepitone, just another celebrity comedian. They fix things by beating up the caveman snake so that they never evolve past a certain point. The snakes in present day eat their own tails, disappearing into the timeline, paying off Rick's reference earlier in the episode, saying that he wanted this plot to eat its own tail. He breaks the fourth wall again when he says you can only get so much curvature out of a time travel story like this. It's the same type of reference as when they did the squirrels bit about having to pack up and move to another reality. I told you, Morty, we could only do this a couple more times because that's how long they have before the joke stops being funny. They bring back Morty's adventure card. Rick tears it up because it's the final adventure on this card. Because of that, Morty can't go to Boob World. R.I.P. Boob World. Even Summer doesn't seem that impressed by it. It kind of makes it sound like she's been there before. Like, ah, you know, maybe we'll go to Boob World again sometime. Whatever. Jerry finishes the Christmas lights. They again reference how incompetent he is, but he and Rick sort of find their compromise again. They've kind of done that several times in the past where they're both at each other's throats for most of the episode, but then by the end, they find some common ground. They pay off the Rick and Morty time travel bit from earlier when it's revealed that these versions have to become those versions and make the suits that they would then later give to their past selves earlier in the episode. That's the writer's attempt to logically close their own time travel loop in the episode. But number one WTF, of course, the post credit scene where Rick learns snake math and Morty sews the snake costumes, then paying off the bit about Morty having a black eye when Rick punches him in the face. Stay inside the ship. If there are any big Easter eggs in the episode that you spotted that I didn't mention in the video, just write them below in the comments. And I will do another Rick and Morty bonus video this week talking about what's going on with the second half of season four, episodes six through 10, because there are 10 episodes total during Rick and Morty season four. This is just the first half of the season, but they are going on break. So there is no new Rick and Morty episode next week or anything like that. My non-spoilery Star Wars Rise of Skywalker review will post on Wednesday. That's also when I'll be posting my Mandalorian Episode 7 video because that's coming early because Rise of Skywalker is coming out later this week. Leave all your bonus video requests in the comments below and everybody click here for my Rick and Morty Season 4 Episode 4 video and click here for my new Mandalorian Episode 6 video. Thank you so much for watching. Happy holidays, everyone. I'll see you guys tonight.